Hello. Hello. <laughs> Got some fans. Um, so hopefully, maybe I'm going to strike a balance between the two because I'm not going to dive into any metrics too deeply. But uh, um, I've made the cardinal sin. My, my slides are far less simple and elegant than your guys. So, but I th thank you. That was both, both, both great talks. Um, so I'm David. I'm the founder and CEO of a company called Signal. Um, we're a machine learning company. We help organizations draw insights out of the world's news uh, data that sits outside of their organizations, make better decisions. So we are a data business as well. So um, preaching to the choir there. And I guess, yeah, we've been around for three years. I founded the company three years ago, uh, kind of north of 60 clients, uh, north of a million dollars ARR, got 35 staff um, based in East London. Um, just opened an office in New York, been through two fold funding rounds, won lots of awards that I have nothing to do with uh, and can take no credit for, usually around our data science, which I'm, I'm not. Um, so I guess why do, we, why do we care about metrics as a business? And, and we, do care, we do care about metrics as an organization. And I guess it, it, it does a number of things for us. Um, I think most importantly for me personally, it's, it's the last one. Uh, I think running a startup business can be an incredibly daunting task. I think it can be incredibly overwhelming. Uh, and at the top, it's typically quite a lonely experience. And so you often don't have benchmarks. You don't have things that you can hold on to that give you uh, clarity and, and, and make you feel certain that you're on the right trajectory. Uh, and I think metrics and benchmarks and measuring your business over a period of time uh, can give you more clarity and give you more certainty as you grow, as you grow the organization. And it certainly has helped me a lot. Um, but I think, you know, as, as we were thinking about you know, uh, giving this talk and, and what metrics mean, I think it kind of, it dawned on me that actually, you know, three years in, um, it's only been very recently and people are obsessed with metrics and VCs, you know, talk about them all the time and they're in every blog, like, you know, uh, the Sazdra blog and the Thomas Tung's blog and the, uh, Jan's blog. Uh, but actually, you know, for, for the first part of building your business, it's actually very, very difficult to access proper metrics and you don't have much data you're just getting out there and building something you're trying to win your first customers you're trying to grow the business and so you know I was thinking about why I put sometimes in brackets metrics are important and I actually think that you know decision making is an emotional thing um, instinct isn't bad instinct is great instinct has helped me build my business and metrics are important uh, but for me, instinct is the guiding force that helps me run my business. And I think metrics and data can inform that process. But ultimately, as a business leader, you should be confident and feel confident in the decisions you make uh, and the gut instincts. And at an early stage, you just don't have that much data. So what I wanted to quickly do, and I won't try, try we won't take too, too, too much time, is kind of just chart you through our trajectory as a business from where we started from and, and kind of where we are today. And some of the metrics that we tried to measure ourselves by as we began to grow. And as you'll see in the kind of early stages, because we didn't have much data, the metrics were fairly binary. Uh, and we were focused on other things uh, aside from just tracking how much web traffic we got, for, for, for example. Um, so I founded the business three years ago with these two chaps who are both very smart technologists. Um, and we founded it in a garage. So we got discounts on our MOTs, which was useful. Um, <laughs> And uh, I, I actually met my co-founders. I think one of the questions, if anyone hasn't, you know, in, you know, is planning to start a business and is, and is asking the question of how do you go about finding co-founders, I found uh, my two princes over here after kissing many frogs at meetups like these. And I went to plenty of text analytics meetups and uh, you know, um, software engineering meetups. And I knew nothing about either of those two fields. And I just started speaking to people. And as I said, I kissed a lot of frogs. And then I met these two beauties here. Uh, and Wes had previously run engineering teams at Ge eBay and Gumtree and Fab.com. And Miguel is a very prominent academic in the field of, of AI. So if anyone tells you that you can't meet quality people at meetups, they're wrong. Look around you. Um, so we started in the garage, and then you know we went about building the MVP. And please, no one take any photos because that was the first version of our product, and uh, it was pretty crude. Um, and yeah, as I said, metrics were pretty scarce, uh, and when available, they're they're pretty binary. You know, we were asking ourselves questions like, is this technology going to work? Can we build a machine learning product? Um, you know, is there a market for this? Does anyone want to buy this product? You know, going out and, and, and pitching to potential customers for the first time and getting slapped about a bit. Um, you know, and can we survive? Do we have enough money to, 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 to pay for some, some coffee beans? Um, and so for me, it was all about instinct. It wasn't about measuring in a granular way uh, or being obsessed about metrics. It was about focusing on the product and thinking about customers and thinking about how could we market it and connecting with people and understanding people. It was less about these, this kind of obsession with data. Um, and then we kind of moved, you know, we, we, we won some early customers and we built a product and we launched it and we, you know, we did what all typical startups tend to do, which is, hey, we're going to go raise some money. And, uh, and, and, and there kind of, that was where the first time we interacted, 
I think with this expectation that everything you do is measured. And VCs profess to be incredibly hyper data driven, but I think as was mentioned earlier, a lot of it's bullshit. Um, they have imperfect data, like you have imperfect data. Um, and while they drive you on lots of metrics, they're also using their instincts and emotions too. Um, and I, I think that's really important to, to think about when you're fundraising, because actually you're connecting with people emotionally and you're selling them a vision. Um, but you know, why, how were we measured by our investors? It was all about that vision. It was about that team and I think the fact that we had complementary skill sets within our team. We had someone with a commercial background, we had an academic, a data scientist, we had a software engineer and as a founding team that was very attractive. It was about the market we were going after and obviously AI and machine learning is a, is, is a big and exciting market. So I think that was attractive. It was about the product that we built and it was about some early traction. We weren't expected to have tens of customers, not even hundreds of customers. We had a handful of customers, but that was enough data. Uh, there was enough metrics there for them to get their teeth into and believe that we had proven something. And so how do we measure the success of the round? Because I think you know, that's, that's important to look at as well. And I think number of term sheets is obviously great and we got a couple of those. And the size of the round we raised, yeah, fantastic. Terms of the round are obviously important. People who add value outside of just money was absolutely critical for us. But I think actually we ultimately ended up with um, you know, a worse valuation. We chose a, a significantly worse valuation at our seed round to go with the funds that we thought were best fit with us culturally and that we could trust implicitly. And I think that that's been proven um, to be the right decision you know, 18 months on. Uh, they've added huge value, but also these are people that we can work with. And so I think you know, those were the, some of the things that we were measuring at the time of fundraising. Um, you know, those were some of the things that we were thinking about. Great, so we raised some cash, uh, and then we were thinking about how do we deploy the money and build a business, and then ultimately how do we measure our success? For us, we were really focused on three things, and they've been spoken about, but you know, I think people are the most important thing, you know, element of a business, they're the most in important ingredient, and so we set about thinking about how do we ensure that we hire a, a world-class team of high-quality talent, people who can help us build a great business, um, and ultimately a, a great product. And then how do we bring that to market most successfully and ensure that we're growing in the right direction and, and how are we going to measure that success? So these are some of the great people that we've hired. Claudia's here, who's our head of marketing, and she's an absolute superstar. Um, and we've got some great people at our company. This is just a handful of the people uh, involved in what we're doing, either in an advisory capacity, but, but, but most of these guys are on, on the team. Um, and you know, what were we thinking about when we're hiring? We're, we're thinking about measuring on cultural fit. We're thinking about skills and relevant experience. We're thinking about career achievements. But again, I would say cultural fit and understanding what we're trying to achieve and that kind of um, get shit done mentality is absolutely key for us. Um, and then, you know, how are we measuring our team or how do we want to measure our team? Because this is all stuff that we're beginning to do and think about much more carefully, but it's about retention. It's about are people progressing? Are they developing their skills? And also importantly, are they satisfied with what they're doing? Do they feel that they come to work? Are they happy? And we're thinking a lot about how the environment that people work in and the types of way that they develop product and the processes that we put in place, how is that going to incentivize them to be satisfied with, with the work that they do? Sorry, I'm committing this cardinal sin. It's making me cringe with all this text on the thing with all your beautiful, simple slides. But uh, how do we measure product success? So I think measuring product success is absolutely key. And this is where I think data can be used to inform your product roadmap and inform how you go about building new features and, and what new product opportunities there are out there. So we track a whole bunch of stuff on our customers. In fact, we track everything, but we do more than that. I think, again, it comes back to it's not just about quantitative data. It's also about qualitative data. I think for an early stage company, we probably be very early in investing in user research. So we have a dedicated user research team who are going out and interviewing and trying to speak to our customers on a regular basis and deeply understand their needs. And I think that that is as important as any of the quant data that you can gather on your customers when they use your products. Um, but we track everything from you know, user engagement, feedback from user research. We track things like how many times customers are referring us to colleagues. Commercial growth is important, and we have a model where we try and land an enterprise customer, and then we expand with the number of seats within an organization. And so that expansion is absolutely key, and that's a key kind of validation for us as we grow our product. And then social proof as well, public feedback, and people giving us nice quotes and telling us nice things about, about our product. Um, and I think a lot of these have been touched upon, but I think, I think the key thing for us when we think about what metrics we track and why we track them is actually, you know, what are the questions we're trying to answer? I think, you know, uh, James made the point that you can, there are so many things you can track. There's so many data points that you can gather in the organization. Um, and for us, it's about trying to answer real business questions. It's about trying to move from, you know, figuring out where we take our product to using the data that we have that our customers are giving us to inform that process. Um, you know, or figuring out, uh, you know, Invest, you know, in our conversations with investors, communicating to them how they're going to get a return on their investment, and that's where the data falls out of it. I think tracking metrics just for the sake of tracking them um, can be fairly useless. Um, God, that's a horrible slide. 
So why is this important? Um, so instincts are great, but do they scale? I think data enhances your ability to make effective decisions. I think they can provide you this holistic view. They answer questions with real evidence. We're all about kind of evidence-based decision making. So when we say something, we're trying to back it up with data. Claudia is a big proponent of that, so if you want to speak to her about it, she'll, she'll tell you all about it. Uh, and it enables you to benchmark your progress over time when there's lots of uncertainty with your organisation. And I think, you know, for us as a data analytics business, we're all about actionable insights, which is a bit of a buzzword. But, you know, it really is true. From data, you can, you can draw insights out of that information. And from those insights, you're trying to move toward action. And so we're thinking about uh, how we can take this data, these operating metrics that we're tracking across our business, and how we can move that into real practical actions, like, like we said earlier. And finally, this is what we do for our customers, so we should be pretty good at it. So these are the sorts of questions that you know, users of our product come to our product and ask. You know, how should I react to a reputational crisis? How should I position a new product? You know, how can I reach the right influences in real time across the media landscape? You know, what's happening in my industry? Um, and you know, we're building technology and, and, and services that help answer these questions, so it would be pretty um, questionable if we weren't doing that internally as well, otherwise we'd be, we'd, be, we'd be eating our own dog food. That's a kind of screenshot of our product, which I can talk more about if you'd like. Um, and then, yeah, this is the final thing, which is very text heavy, but Tom Tungs, who's the most data-driven VC in the world, and I guess this is my overarching point, he tells this great story, which is about this German guy who got struck by lightning and it frazzled a bit of his brain, and so he could no longer experience emotion. Uh, and you know, psychologists were fascinated with this guy and they really wanted to study him because they were certain that without emotion, uh, this, this individual would be able to make perfect decisions. But in actual fact, he was unable to make any decisions uh, and that was because he didn't have all the data available to him. And you're never as a startup gonna have all the information and data available to you. You can track every metric under the sun, but it's, it's an imperfect science. Um, there's just too many unknowns and, and, and VCs are in the same position. And so I just think, you know, the, the final point is, is having done this for three years and had some relative success, I think, you know, uh, my main message is trust your gut, use data to inform that, um, but, you know, trust your instincts and, 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 and follow that a little bit as well. So there you go. That was my... Thank you. Oh, and we're hiring, if anyone fits that description. <laughs> cool. Thank you. Oh, questions, sorry, if anyone has any. No. <laughs> yes. What's a, what's a data oh, a data storyteller. That is someone who works in marketing, but who has a, a data science or data kind of visualization background who can help us essentially use all of this amazing data that we have. We, you know, as I said, we aggregate all of the world's news media, um, blog content, uh, to try and help us tell interesting stories or kind of surface insights from that data that we can use for marketing purposes. Yeah, so I mean, the machine learning isn't necessarily used to aggregate the information. It's more used to turn that unstructured data into something structured. So, so, so we aggregate millions and millions of documents every day. Um, and what we take from that unstructured data, we mine it for things like topics and entities and sentiment anomalies. And um, we built this text analytics engine that can essentially uh, mine it for that information. And then that's how we power the products and enable people to track things that they care about or draw insights out of the information. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So it was. It was the original idea was was mine, and it was it was a it was a idea that I'd had, and you know, you think about some of these things, and you work with various people, but it was it was it was a, I had a kind of clarity of vision, but I knew that I didn't have uh, anywhere near close to the skills to be able to realise that. Um, so it was it was truly as I described it. I literally started going to meetups and often you know it was kind of like reversal of school I, I was being the all the techies were kind of the cool kids and i was ignored in the corner and wasn't no one wanted to talk to me um <laughs> probably because i had nothing to say and then and then i guess after a while you begin to build a network and you and you you, you kind of build start building relationships and i i met an academic in the field who knew miguel who's one of our co-founders and he actually said i can you know i can help you with this project why don't we do some you know why don't we collaborate um and he introduced me to Miguel, and that's how I, I met him. And then Wes, uh, who's our CTO, as well, I met him at a meetup, 
and then I spammed him for a while and he refused to answer my spams. But okay. after about three attempts, he still got the, the spams. And I was talking all sorts of crap. I was like, we're well funded and I've got this beautiful office. It was a garage. And uh, <laughs> I said, we're a very well funded startup. Just come down and meet with me. Um, and I think he was working for a big corporation at the time. Um, and you know, for a lot of people who are passionate about what they do, you know, they, they want to do something impactful. They want to make a difference. And so, you know, often they're looking for an opportunity like this. So it, just, it was very fortunate because I think often without resources, it's about timing, it's about meeting the right people. So I feel very lucky that I was able to meet them. How did you get your first few customers? Just going out and hustling, really. I mean, they built this in initial MVP that you saw up there. Um, and I kind of just, by hook or by crook, family, friends, asked for introductions, took it out to people. And initially, we didn't really have a, a proper product end to end, but there was enough there that we could go and you know, pitch it to people and convince them that maybe there was, you know, there was an opportunity. Um, and then, yeah, the first customer was a big day. We've got that check framed in our office. Um, and then we kind of built, built, built on it from there. Yeah. Cool. cool. Thank you. Cheers.